So, um, I'm going to end this day soon. I'm going to go get some food in the supermarket because I realize we don't have that much food because we didn't think about things can happen here. But I can think that the only thing that I can compare this morning, this morning siren and going into the bomb shelter with strangers is like the Blitz in, New, in London. So there was World War II and it was a horrible war. There was just Remembrance Day for the British. But somehow people were hoping there'll be an end to it. So it was a horrible war that lasted for long, long years. But here it's, it's been going on for much longer than World War II. Of course, um, can't compare, compare wars, but it's still way too long. I mean, I remember myself uh, as a young person uh, going, having to carry a gas mask and going into sealed room with the Gulf War. And then there was another war and people, during the time I was not here, people have lived here through war after war and attack after attack. And, you know, um, it's incredible. If you haven't experienced it yourself, you cannot begin to explain what it feels like to hear a siren. You're walking your dog, your dogs, and you, you hear a siren and the panic. And then you see people going into a shelter, you follow them. And then you see people in pajamas. There was a guy in his shorts. And we're all gathered together. We're perfect strangers and we're like, we don't know what's gonna happen. And the mother is explaining to the kids quietly, this is, we better go here. She was the only one who was going into the shelter. The other ones were in the staircase because the bomb shelter wasn't prepared and it had a lot of junk in it. But she took the children to the area that was made out of very strong uh, material, which is a professional shelter. And they were standing there, a mother with two children. The children didn't cry. They didn't panic. They just followed the mother. And everybody was calm. And I started to cry. And this young girl, without anything, gave me a glass of water. And I think that was the most touching moment ever. She didn't even, like, nothing. She just drank. Drank that water and began to feel better. Plus, I looked at the children. I said to myself, don't you dare, don't you dare make those children upset. We don't know how long we're going to be there. And I'm not going to upset those children. Elementary school children, I think, must have been around 10. The girl and five and you know afterwards I've been having these post-trauma effect which is every time I hear the slightest noise and like from a car or from a you know I keep thinking there's a rocket a siren again it's happened to me three times already the only thing is once I got out of Tel Aviv um, and I went to another place that wasn't affected in the area it wasn't in the area range of the, the rockets and people were very calm there and there was nature. I sort of calmed down and I thought how good that I had to go somewhere in that direction. But to tell you that this doesn't leave um, marks on people, the idea that you have to go to a bomb shelter, it's just inconceivable. And there's this, on the one hand, feeling of helplessness and on the other hand, I'm remembering the words of Viktor Frankl that says, in every situation you have a choice. And again and again I say to myself, why did I do this? Why did I come back to Israel? And I think of all the people that come here from foreign countries and they say, asking themselves the same questions. What am I doing here? And this madness and this rocket attacks, 160 rockets is a lot of rockets to throw. And the problem is that Israel is presented in the media as this, what is it, the, the biblical metaphor is Goliath and the Palestinians are the, I wouldn't say Palestinians, I would say the terrorists because 
I would not generalize. Uh, the, police, the, the terrorists are presented as the David, like they're the underdog. I mean, 160 rockets is a lot of rockets and God knows how many rockets they have. So meanwhile, we're coming to this sort of wall here they built. Um, they're planting here trees soon and people have drawn on it. It's really sweet to see. And life goes on. It's very quiet. It's a quiet part of the city. I'm just walking and thinking. Just, um, it's been a really long day. I didn't do that much. I studied. I went, I'm really happy I went to my, uh, course because if I hadn't gone I would have been really behind and I want to finish my teaching certificate finally in my age. I mean I started this teaching certificate before my daughter was born and it's about time I finish it one day and um, so I was so busy with teaching concepts and learning and we had research methods and how to research a classroom and how to research uh, acquisition of foreign language and just everything comes up to him because I'm in such an intense program and the teachers are so amazing and I'm so happy I'm in this program because I think the, what the teacher said, the lecturer said today was the most beautiful answer. I said, why do we have to learn research methods for teaching English as a foreign language? And she said, well, you know, teachers are lifelong learners and we always have to know which methods work the best. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful answer and what amazing place I'm in that people are not cynical about learning despite the difficulties of the education system in Israel, that there are still people that really take it seriously and think that there is that we can do a change. Look at all this, somebody did all these flowers here. That's pretty cool. I have to come here and draw too. I'm gonna to do some drawings myself. So, oh, you see that? I don't know if you can see that. So, I know I'm an idealist person, that I live in ideals and sometimes reality is like, hits me hard, but I'm really happy I made this choice. I was on a crossroads and I said, should I leave? Especially I was really concerned. I'm not so much concerned about human beings who can go to shelters or have a choice or animals that are so helpless. They depend on us for everything and those poor animals, just leaving them uh, in an unclear situation. I had a huge dilemma. I don't want to say Sophie's choice, God forbid, but it was a sort of like a choice. Do I leave my home? Do I leave my family? and go off to study and leave my pets, my helpless animals and my son and just leave them and go off. And then I realized, I said, look, I don't have really young children and the animals are old. They don't really hear well, which is a blessing. They were not really upset by the siren. They were very well behaved. You didn't even feel their presence. They were just so quiet, just standing with them. And even when I was crying, the dogs didn't react at all. They didn't bark. They were just so quiet, just so sad. And I was thinking, why are we in a situation like this? And I really want people to wake up. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, you should know. You should really know that Israel is not looking, I think, to... Israel is not looking to murder people. The targeted killing was very precise of this terrorist leader, and he was planning um, one of their campaigns to murder people, regardless of whether they're Jewish or Arabs. By the way, we are living very much together here, entwined. So I don't think it's possible to kill civilians without killing, without... It's not like you kill only Jews here, you kill also Muslims. So if you care about, if you care about um, Arab people too, if you are Muslim, you should know that the Hamas, the Jihad, Hamas, the Jihadist Hamas, uh, these extreme terrorists are targeting also Arab Israelis or Arabs that live here or anyone 
whether they're from Africa or from, you know, African origin or Arab origin or Jewish people, we're all targeted the same way. So, because the rocket doesn't know how to differentiate between an Arab and a Jew. So, it's really important. I was really like going up to people that I know from school that are, you know, and I, I felt like they were, they were looking at me like strange. Why are you coming to me? Like coming to the, our Arab colleagues and thinking, oh, they must be tough for them because they just can't help what other people that are of the same, supposedly the same ethnic origin or religion are doing. And, and it's nothing to do with them because they're not, they're such good people that just really want to educate kids and to learn English and to, to promote education. And it's just so sad for me. Oh, this is an interesting gallery here. Wow. Oh, New York. Just so sad, I thought that I really was worried about them because I thought, you know, we're together. But what about them? They probably feel so, so torn, like between like thinking it's not my fault I didn't do anything and then having probably the risk of people blaming them just because they're their exterior just because they look Arab they're in traditional clothing you know the women they have a covering head covering which is very typical Muslim and then just I would be really worried about them being like you know people not understanding the difference between people that are seeking to harm us. And so I felt, I really worried about them. I really did. I was thinking, you know, we're here together, but what about them? You know, they have such a difficult situation here. So on the one hand, this whole area in the Middle East is Arab, um, or it's not really Arab, it's like there's all kinds of ethnic groups, but uh, let's say it's Muslims and then, they're living with these Jewish people and they have to adjust, they have to be, you know, they learn our language and they, we, we go to, we study together now. It's such an important experience for me. I don't think, I don't think there's anything more important than this experience I'm, I'm having at the moment, which I'm so proud of it. And I'm thinking, I wish everybody in the world could have an experience of studying with somebody who's supposed to be their enemy and not. But I mean, I've already had experience because I know the Arabs are living among us, whether you go to the pharmacy or coffee shop. I try to say to pupils who speak in a racist way when I was teaching high school in a, one part of the town, which is challenging. People are very quick to generalize and be racist. And the thing is that we really live entwined lives. And people in Europe, in America, India, I don't care wherever you are, you should know this, that in Israel, there's no separation between Arabs and Jews as such. The Arabs live here and they work here. And I'm not saying there's no racism and extremism probably on both sides, maybe one side more, I don't know, but you cannot separate us anymore. Because if you go to the grocery store, there's Arabs. You go to the pharmacy, there's Arab people, and they are just here everywhere. And we study with them, and we work with them, and we go to the hospitals, and there are doctors and nurses and pharmacists, and it's amazing. And if there's anything I want people to know about Israel is that people do coexist, even though there are difficult areas where people are fighting each other. And I know the situation in Gaza is horrible, horrific beyond words, but the situation here, having to live years for years under rocket attacks is also horrible. Can compare pain to pain, however, if Israel could choose not to be in war, I don't think anybody here for one second would initiate any sort of violence if it didn't mean that we are eliminating a person who's planning to massacre and murder us.
And as I pass by, I hear a meow. Oh, thank God it's on a little kitten. Oh, God. I really hope the cat feeders were out. I try not to intervene with the cat feeders, but I hope they, they did their job here. There are amazing people who feed stray cats here. So, when a rocket falls, it can kill anything. And that's what's scary about it. So people, even if you don't like certain ethnic groups, realize that in Israel, it's mixed, very much mixed. So, when you are speaking badly about Israel, realize that the violence that people endure here is shared by all the ethnic groups. Men, women, children of every ethnic group in this area. And I can't even imagine what people in Syria must experience, or just anyone living in a war zone. And of course, what's going on in Gaza, that the terrorists are just holding the population there in the most disgusting, despicable hold where people cannot express their opinions. So I can't imagine people actually want to live this way in constant war and to dedicate so much focus on rockets and not enough focus on education and health and infrastructure and just having an, a normal life. Why they are constantly forced into this conflict and instead of finding a solution why are we constantly in this fight? I don't know. I don't have answers. I really don't want to talk about politics in that way, except that I do hope, sincerely, that this conflict will be over and that people can live together. It will be. It would be my wish to see it in my lifetime so that I don't have to leave, I don't have to go away from this planet knowing my children will have to live in this world where there's such conflicts exist. Um, I don't know how many of my children will ever live here permanently. However, I would like to think that it should be possible for me to live in this country and to become part of this society again. I'm a replanted tree. I've left it a long time ago and I'm coming back here. And I feel such a big responsibility on my shoulders. And I really think that everybody should feel responsible for this world and for creating peace. and. You know, so many unnecessary conflicts. Just before the rocket attack, I had this argument with a woman who didn't want to give me a space to practice yoga. And just not very nice conversation. I'm not proud of it, but I can say that. At one point, sometimes you can't avoid certain conflicts because you don't want people stepping all over you on the one hand. but. It should be possible to, to live, live as a peaceful being in this planet. It should be possible to live with as little conflict as possible and to try to, to live at peace. I don't know how, um, what's tomorrow going to be like. It really does stir up a lot of things for me having lived like this pretty much since forever. When I was very young, there was a war, a very big war. And then there was another war. Then we went, to, we lived abroad, we came back, another war. And just, there's not one family that hasn't been affected by violence in this region, one way or another, and I just think the same goes on the other side, and I think we really, really have to try to find solutions. 
And I don't have time for wars. I don't have time for conflicts. I think our time should be dedicated for peace. I'm really grateful for the yoga path. Really grateful for showing me a system that helps me. And it's so sad that I have to go from a yoga practice by the river to a bomb shelter within less than two minutes. One day I'm, one minute I'm like doing the sun salutation and meditating by the river. And the next minute I'm in a bomb shelter crying and it shouldn't be like this. So I really urge everybody to support peaceful resolutions, peaceful solutions. Um, yeah, wherever possible, and I don't know. We just have to embrace what we have now. Peace, I love, and I'm gonna go now home. Bye.